this is Carl James Lankford. I'm going to be doing one of my video logs. I haven't done them for a while. It's um, the 18th of April, and we're going to be looking at um, the archaeologist Kathleen Kenyon. Um, I did a complete series of archaeological looks at female archaeologists. Um, Dame Kathleen Kenyon uh, was one of those great archaeologists shown in this image. Um, in 1977, she was born in 1906. Um, 5th of January, quite appropriately, 1906, which is the same birth date as me, but I wasn't born in 1906. If I was, I think everybody around me has to relook at their relationships with me. She died on the 24th of August 1978, and she was, as I said, one of the greats of archaeology. She She's basically known for her excavations in Jericho and Jerusalem, and um, she co-excavated uh, one of the first female archaeologists to excavate in Britain, the Jewry War, um, alongside um, Sir Mortimer Wheeler, um, and very much an academic. Catherine Kenyon um, first has to be seen um, against the backdrop, not of a... Um, academic, um, not just because of her academic achievements, um, but because she is um, a great female archaeologist. Um, her father, Frederick Kenyon, a great biblical scholar um, and one of the um, directors of the British Museum, really inspired her. Um, and she very much grew up in an atmosphere, a landscape of archaeology. Kathleen was. Um, very much um, a tomboy, um, but she was very much the archaeologist as well. Determined that she would um, um, be seen by her father as being well educated, um, and she studied very much in Oxford. And Oxford was where she became um, an archaeologist, and she gradu graduated in 1929. And against that grap backdrop it took her to um, the great excavations um, at Great Zimbabwe where she joined Gertrude Caton Thompson with her expedition there and she was very much enticed then um, by Sir Mortimer Wheeler. She joined Sir Mortimer Wheeler um, with his excavations at Verulanium um, in the summers of 1930 and 1935 and at Verulanium, um, very much working alongside Sir Mortimer Wheeler and um, Lady Wheeler, uh, the discipline of meticulously controlled and recorded stratigraphic excavation, box grid excavation, that's what we call it, and uh, with the excavations at Verulanium in the Great Theatre. Verulanium St Albans is one of the great archaeological sites um, and she went on to excavate then in, she travelled around a bit actually, like lots of female archaeologists of the day. Uh, she travelled traveled around a bit, 1931, 1934. Um, Kenyon actually worked at Samaria. Uh, Samaria was um, a site, well it is a site in Palestine, and she worked alongside the a partnership of John Crowfoot and Grace Crowfoot. Um, always watch those Hercule Poirot movies where you see female and male archaeologists working alongside each other and one of the archaeologists ends up with a knife in their back. Um, but basically inspired by the amount of archaeological work going on in Palestine and the Middle East at that time. Um, the, the excavations um, very much that Kenyon was involved in were quite a great plethora of archaeology. She was working in Great Zimbabwe a few seasons earlier. Um, and that, that sort of, you're looking at about six, seven hundred years ago in the archaeological table, and then, then, then she has been working with Sir Mortimer Wheeler on a Roman site, thousand nine hundred years uh, old, and then she's working in Samaria and Palestine, working on an Iron Age site, two thousand two hundred years old. She's very much into um, varying different fields, and then, then, then she has a bit of a dabble in prehistory as well. Um, so she comes back again in 1934, yeah, travelling around about, and she's instrumental in the foundation of the great archaeological universities of the country, Britain, the Institute of Archaeology, University College of London. Um, and she went on to um, 
to other things with Sir Mortimer Wheeler with the jewelry wall um, excavations um, which he was very much involved in uh, with Sir Mortimer Wheeler uh, well maybe not so much alongside Sir Mortimer Wheeler uh, basically on her own bat um, where she was very much excavating um, on the jewelry wall excavations uh, in Leicester uh, being a Leicester University uh, boy myself I can very much understand um, the the in, the inspiration that uh, excavating on the Leicester jewelry wall, uh, the great Roman site would have actually given her. Um, lo lots lots of work going on um, alongside all this, and she was um, very much working alongside other um, archaeologists um, and historians who had different um, ideas on how archaeology should actually be undertaken. Not only working with Sir Mortimer Wheeler on the box grid excavations and um, stratigraphy, she worked alongside somebody else who was more pioneering as well. Alan Sorrell, the great, the great sketcher, the great reconstructor of history and archaeology across the country. Up until very recently, all Cadu guidebook books in Wales, very much um, various other historical organisations would have carried an Alan Sorrell reconstruction in it. And very much she was... Um, she was very much in an Alan Sorrell's ilk, um, ba basically gaining some inspiration as well. In 1937, um, um, Kenyon actually uh, published her reconstructed uh, work and her ideas of excavation in the Illustrated London News. Um, coming on with the intervening wall, war, more than anything, she excavated um, at the Jericho um, site. But before she actually got there, the Second World War intervened um, and she very much worked um, in London at the Southwark excavations. Um, but as the war um, intervened, um, she became very much one of these individuals who was in the post-war archaeology, archaeological ilk. Um, visiting sites such as Sam Bratha in Roman Libya. At that point, eventually, she went on to work with the British School of Archaeology in Jerusalem, working on the um, Jericho excavations. Now, if those of you know about the Jericho excavations, um, and she was then um, um, looking um, at the Jericho excavations from 1952 to 1958, with, with Jericho in particular, um, she um, was one of those who actually discovered maybe... Um, the bone evidence pre and post tuberculosis um, and this wasn't revealed until after a death that she'd actually come across pre tuberculosis bones post tuberculosis bones maybe that jericho was one of those sites where um tuberculosis tuberculosis actually first started maybe as far back as eight thousand years ago um working again in a, a great range of historical periods she was working on an early bronze age walled city so we're looking at um, going back at least 4,000 plus years, um, very much into a stratification of a pottery, very much into um, looking at the pottery to really gleam an idea of sequencing um, and maybe able to um, understand um, that very sequencing to understand phases and changes, maybe linking in with the Bible. Um, Unwittingly, um, Kenyon more or less proved um, the existence of the stories in the Bible, but she was not really much of a biblical scholar. She wished to prove archaeological fact, but unwittingly, um, eventually, when after 1958, 1961 to 1967, excavated Jerusalem on the city of David, uh, very much again evidence of. Um, the, the biblical nature, um, not so much of a work, but very much proving some events in the Bible that actually did happen at Jericho um, and Jerusalem. Um, so very much um, unwittingly um, assisting biblical archaeologists. Um, it can be said that um, leading lights, the importance of her archaeology um, and her understanding of archaeology. Um, just, just a bit of a quick quote, really. Um, Here's a quote. Um, the first event was the refinement of stratigraphic techniques that Kathleen Kenyon's excavation at Jericho catalyzed the strict separation of earth layers or archaeological sediments 
also allowed the strict separation of ceramic assemblages. Basically, sequencing, looking at that, that stratigraphic sequencing to actually prove um, historical events, putting everything into date order, was very much inner ilk as, as an archaeologist. Um, very much in, in her later years, um, Kenyon didn't go on forever, as, as most archaeologists, most of us never go on forever. Um, I'm sure if I did, my children would be very disappointed and they wouldn't be able to um, absorb the millions that I don't have. But she died in 1978, um, but she basically became a dame. DBE honours, recognised for her archaeological work. Some people say she's probably one of the most influential archaeologists of the last century, in fact. She is by far one of the most influential female archaeologists um, to have ever walked the earth. But we're looking at other female archaeologists over the next few few weeks um, as I do update these video vlogs. Uh, this is Carl James Langford. Glad to be back. Um, thank you for listening to my video vlog today. Thank you very much.